Okay, in this one, we're gonna take a look at some development environments. Now we've already done a few of these on the channel and I'm just gonna jump into the browser to show you them. So we covered how to set up your local environment using Laragon and there's a tutorial on the channel that you guys can check out in regards to how to get this set up. We talked about Laravel Homestead, which is good for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And there's also a set of tutorials on the channel that you guys can follow to set that up as well. We've also covered Laravel Valet as a development environment for Mac OS, and this is specifically for Mac OS. This one runs Nginx in the background and uses Valet to proxy domains on your local development or your local machine. Valet is kind of nice out of the box because it supports a lot of different frameworks. So things like Magento, Slim Micro Framework, WordPress, Symfony. Uh, there's a list on the Laravel.com that you guys can check out. It's also very fast and has a very light footprint, around seven megs of RAM or so. And you have to be familiar with Homebrew for this one, which is also covered on the channel. In order to get really familiar with Valet, you should be able to use a command line interface. And we've covered some terminal stuff on this channel as well. It does take some getting used to, and it might be a little bit intimidating for new users or beginners. Now there's one that we haven't actually covered on the channel yet. It's called Laravel Sale. And that one has a lot of additional benefits that outweigh the other two. So Sale is a convenient way for interacting with Docker containers. And if you're familiar with Docker, this one will make sense. And if you are using a Docker environment, this is the one that you wanna reach for. Perhaps at a future date, I'll cover this one on the channel as well. Now, there's a new one that's been out for about half a year or so, and it's been readily adopted and it's pretty good. Now, the thing is you gotta remember, just use whatever works for you. So the one that we're gonna take a look at today, this one is called Herd. So Laravel Herd is another alternative that includes everything that you need to get started with Laravel development out of the box. So once again, this one's only available for Mac OS, so you need something greater than Mac OS version 12 or Monterey uh, for this to work out. So we're just gonna quickly download this. And before we actually open this file or this DMG file, we're gonna jump into terminal. So prior to Herd, you had to use something like uh, Homebrew to get Valet installed. So if you had Brew installed, you'd be able to see all the Brew commands that you can do. So whether you can update your extensions or upgrade Brew itself, or check to see if Brew is working. So we could do like a uh, Brew doctor. So this kind of warns you about any formulas that may be deprecated or missing or any kind of issues that you may be having with certain casks inside of Homebrew. When you want it to stay up to date with Brew, you have to do something along the lines of Brew Upgrade. So with Brew Upgrade, that would update all of the sellers or all of the things that you've installed with Homebrew. And we could also run commands like Brew Outdated to see if there were any outdated installs. We could also do something like a Brew Update to update Homebrew itself. Now, whenever there was an update to Laravel Valet, you had to do something along the lines of Valet on Latest. That would be if you have Valet installed, and you would know that you'd have Valet installed by just typing Valet, and Valet would give you a list of all these commands. Now, pay particular attention to some of these commands as they are also available with a flavor of herd, meaning that you would prefix the word herd instead of Valet to access some of these commands. And that is because Herd is built on top of Laravel Valet. It has its own binaries and it doesn't require Homebrew to work. And you also have a choice of using the command line interface, something like Terminal, iTerm, or Warp, or something along those lines, or you can use the GUI approach, the graphical user interface. Now, once again, there's a bunch of tutorials on the channel in regards to Laravel Valet, Homestead, Laragon, and ways to set up your PHP or your development environment. All right, let's install Laravel Herd. Okay, so what I did was I just clicked on the herd DMG file that I downloaded from the website, and I'm just gonna drag this over to the applications folder. And once it's installed, we'll just close this. Now you would open herd like any other application on your Mac system. So you can use something like Spotlight, type in herd, and we'll walk through the installer. So what's nice is herd already detected that I already have Valley running on my system and it wants me to stop Valet before I install or before I proceed with the rest of the installation steps for Herd. Now you could do this in the terminal. I could do like a Valet stop, but they've really conveniently just set it up right here with this button. So you would just click Valet stop and this would do the exact same thing. And then we'll continue. You may also have noticed that Herd downloaded a version of PHP 8.2, but if I jump back to terminal over here and I check the version here, you see that I'm running 8.3, and this 8.3 installation is being ran through Homebrew. So let's click on this and continue. And it's also your choice if you want to have Herd start automatically when your system starts up. You can check that if you want, or in my case, I'm just gonna leave that unchecked. I'm gonna say, let's get started. So Laravel Herd is located just at the top here. If you were to click on the Herd logo, you'll see that you have settings, 
you can check for updates. So we're using the latest version as of this recording, 1.32. We have versions of PHP 8.2 and 8.0, and it looks like there is a shortcut like Command 1 and Command 2 to switch between those versions. We can see our PHP INI file, we can quit, and we can stop all services, and it looks like there's only one service running right now, and we can check our settings. Now your settings are gonna be slightly different than mine, but what is gonna be common is you're gonna have a herd folder in which you will keep all your projects. I have additional folder uh, where I keep some other projects, so code and projects using Laravel Valet. Sites will list all your projects. Now before I jump to the PHP tab, I wanna check something out. And that brings up my .zshrc file. So I'm using the zsh shell. You could be using bash or possibly fish or some other shell. And this is an alias that I'm using. So it's equivalent to typing this. In this case, I asked VS Code to open up this file here, which is the .zshrc file. And you'll see at the very bottom of the file, herd added some of its export paths into the .zshrc file. Now this might be your bash file or another shell that you're using. And if you're not familiar with .zsh or this kind of shell, there is a tutorial on this channel that you guys can check out to get a little more familiar with that. The reason I wanna show you this is because this is gonna come in useful later on when we wanna uninstall herd, or maybe you don't like it and you wanna remove it from your system. So you do need to know where your .zshrc file is or your bash underscore rc file. So I want you to be aware of this because when you want to uninstall herd, you'll need to know where this is. So we're going to jump over to PHP and you notice that as far as herd is concerned, there isn't a version of PHP installed that is 8.3 on my system, but there actually is. And that was installed via homebrew, like I said, once again. So you'd only really choose one. You wouldn't be working with herd and valet per se. You probably would choose herd, valet, homestead, docker, Laravel sale or something along those lines. But just for the sake of demonstration and showing you guys this other alternative, I'm gonna have both running. So I'm gonna install 8.3 to be used with Laravel herd. And I'm also gonna take these two because I wanna show you something a little later on. Now you don't need every version of PHP, obviously. You just need whatever you're working on or whatever your project requires. Now let's just take a look back at our ZSHRC file. And you notice that this is what herd does. So herd will keep track in this .zshrc file or bash file where the paths are for these installed versions of PHP. So because I installed all the way from 7.4 all the way to 8.3, they're listed here. So you do wanna keep that in mind. Okay, next on the tab is expose. I will cover this option in an upcoming video. Then we have shortcuts. You can create shortcuts for things like Tinkerwell or Tinker. So if you ever use Tinker in Laravel, like PHP Artisan Tinker or you can even choose the version of terminal that you have. So whether it's iTerm, terminal, or warp, and the about tab is pretty self-explanatory. So we're gonna close the settings options. We're gonna jump back over to terminal and I'm gonna clear everything. Now, some of you who are paying really close attention may have noticed that two of the three of my services were not working. And that's because if you're coming from Valet and you used Homebrew, there may be some port conflicts, meaning that Homebrew may be using some of the ports that Herd is trying to request to use for its application. So what you can do is say brew services and you wanna stop the services that Homebrew is occupying. So in this case it would be Nginx and the other service would be the DNS mask. So if you were to run those two commands, these services would be stopped. And then we could do a brew services list and what that will do is list all the services that are currently running or that are bound to Homebrew. Now, this might not take effect unless you exit your terminal or you quit. And I kind of went behind the scenes to do this. So if I was to type in brew doctor, I cleaned up the deprecated files and warnings. If I was to do brew upgrade, it would grab any new formulas that needed updating. If I was also to do something like brew update, it would put me on the latest version of Homebrew. And if there was anything that needed to be removed or cleaned up, that would be done as well. Okay, let's check back in on our herd application. And we can see that the services are all running. So Nginx is now running and the DNS mask is now running. The interesting thing is that DNS mask is running a TLD that is not the same as the one that I was using in Valet. So if I was to say Valet TLD, my original top level domain is what TLD stands for, was .code and I believe Herd 
uses a .tst or test domain TLD. Now I created a project recently and it was called Laravel 11 or L11 and I use the .code TLD and you'll see that that doesn't work because that's the top level domain that was used for Valet. So Valet is using .code. Now, if I was to do the same URL and this time around I use .test, you will see that it'll open up the Laravel application that I had in the previous video concerning the dev version of Laravel. Now that's fairly easy to change as a lot of the settings are exactly the same as that of Valet because Herd is built on top of Valet. Okay, so now that everything's working, um, if you're new, we covered a lot. And if you're familiar with Valet, this might make sense. But if you've never installed Valet and you've actually never installed Homebrew or Sail or anything like that, and you're new and you want to set up this environment, all you have to do is go to herd.laravel.com, download the DMG file, and just follow the instructions and install. And everything should work as is. I just wanted to show some of the nuances and caveats that you guys would see if you already had Valet installed and currently working on your platform and you wanted to go ahead and use Laravel Herd. And if you need to watch this video again, because there was a lot going on, go ahead and do so. And leave any questions or comments that you have. In the next video, we're going to take a look at some of the advanced usages around Herd for Mac OS. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.